Hello everybody and welcome to Sin City Living. My name is Jason. I'll be bringing you today's episode. Now I've been trying to get away from doing the, uh, the intros, but I haven't had a whole lot of success with that. So I'm going to have to go back into doing that again, but I'm going to try and keep this as short as I possibly can. I apologize for, uh, for how infrequently we've been posting videos the last few weeks. Been working a whole bunch of extra shifts and then I went in and had, had uh, eye surgery. So I've been recovering from that and still am. But hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we're going to get back to our usual routine of having a, a decent number of videos coming out for you guys, especially all those exclusive videos for our patrons. We're really trying to focus on, on giving you guys some awesome content. So for anybody that is interested in that, just go ahead and check the description of the video down below. And I've had, had quite a few questions, uh, even though we've had this system in place for a little while, quite a few questions on how you can... Uh, how how our fans can tip us or show appreciation to us and you can buy us a cup of coffee. We, uh, we set up uh, a, um, a quote unquote tip jar for that. Uh, again, just check the description of the video down below if you're curious about that. Um, otherwise, you know, hope you guys are enjoying things. Please email us with anything strategies you would like to see, questions you may have, videos you would like to see, if you would like to see us do the true crime stuff again, or, or just uh, the mob stories on Vegas, or the history of Vegas, or restaurants, um, anything you might like to see, see, uh, see from us, please shoot me an email, uh, sincitylivinglv at gmail.com. We love shooting this stuff for you guys. Otherwise, we're going to jump right into today's video. So for today's video, I want to talk about just strategies in general and what the real goal is of most of the strategies. Obviously not all of the strategies, but most of the strategies. Now I want to preface this with saying that this particular video is going to be more talking than showing. Um, I'm going to of course use, use some of the, the uh, chips and bets and such to show you things. So this is going to be more talking and more concept. So if that's not your thing, because we get some people that complain about how we get a little wordy on, on some of our videos, then by all means just skip the video. It's not going to be for you. Um, but for those of you guys that are sticking around, I want to talk about the, the, the true goal of most strategies, because we have featured a lot of strategies on this channel. We will continue to do so from the power press, which is, of course, the way you can win the most money, to the mid press, which is the most common of uh, the really, really successful strategies, to the Iron Cross, various uh, um, variants of the Iron Cross, and you know, so on and so forth. I mean, so many different strategies. And then strategies that are just a blend of them. Now, here's the thing. Like, when we show this, like we show the, the power press where we, you know, we'll say 64 across. And then we show how, we, how it presses up and how fast it can hit table max. And then we show it with 15, 30, 45, and 60 rolls without a 7, which is good to great to fantastic to absolutely unreal rolls. I mean, you're talking anywhere between 12 to 15 minutes all the way up to an hour and a half to two hour rolls. Um, and we show the statistical likelihood. But here's the thing. Most of those strategies, and I'm not talking about the complex hedge this, hedge that, you know, how, you know play both sides strategies, but the, the more common strategies that tend to win the most often and can win the biggest, um, their strategy is to break the statistical likelihoods. And that doesn't mean that, the, the, that examining a strategy based on, on the statistical likelihoods is false. It just means that it doesn't necessarily take an hour and a half roll in order to hit that pretty close to that same profit level as you would on an hour and a half roll. So let me give an example of that. So we had a roll a while back, and I've talked about this a few times on the channel, where we had, I believe it was a six roll, 14 times in about 20 minutes. 14 times in about 20 minutes. That is exactly what these strategies are looking for. They're looking for one number to roll far more often than it statistically should. Now 14 is an outlier. That one stuck out of my head just because it was such a ridiculous amount of sixes to roll in such a short amount of time. I can't say that I've ever seen that before and who knows how long it's going to be until I see it again. But I have seen many times 8 to 10 of a number roll. Now let's look at, uh, I don't I always do the six and eight, uh, I don't really feel like dealing with two different colors. So let's look at the five or nine. And let's say eight, okay, eight, strat eight hits of a nine. That is really what most strategies are looking for. Eight hits of a nine, very, very uncommon. It's not something you're, you're likely to see in, in any given roll, even, uh, 
If you stayed on a table for eight hours straight, an entire shift, you still may not see the nine hit eight times on one shooter's roll. You might, I would say your odds are decent, but it's not a guarantee. Um, but eight hits it, of any particular number, it, it happens with, actually no, you know, yeah, eight hits, it's, it's not, I would say you, you got a 50-50 chance in that eight hours. Now say six to seven hits, the odds go up quite a bit that you're gonna see it on any given moment. And that is what these strategies are looking for. So I wanna, I wanna show you guys, now I'm not gonna do same bet because the same bet strategies are just stupid. The same bet strategies just, they flat out don't have a winning, a winning condition at all. They have to hit this just insane number of rolls. Okay, so I had somebody comment about how the Iron Cross, the true weakness is the field and that every strategy's uh, break even point is about six rolls or, or more. So it was, a, it, was a, uh, it was a false analysis. It really, really wasn't. Because here's the thing. Let's say, I'll use the nine as a great example, but six or eight would have worked too. Six hits of the nine were to roll. The Iron Cross breaks even. That's it, it just breaks even. Obviously there might be a few other numbers here and there, so it maybe it makes 20, 30, 40 dollars. Because it's just the same bet, same bet, same bet. So it's barely making any money. Whereas other, other strategies are not breaking even with that, but they are actually winning. So let's look at, say a $10 table, okay? I'm gonna look at a couple different things. We're gonna say eight hits on the nine. But we'll actually even, even pause briefly and look at it at six and seven hits, but eight hits on the nine. We're gonna look at a power press, a mid press. We're gonna look at a regression strategy after, uh, um, you know, same bet and then, uh, no, we'll, we'll look at a regression strategy after the first hit and we'll look at a power press and then regress. Okay, so power press, mid press, regression, power press regression. So the very first hit of this, it's gonna pay $14. Now the power press player is gonna throw in a dollar, so they're now stuck even more. The mid press player is gonna go ahead and they're gonna collect nine, press up five. The regression strategist is gonna collect 55, and they're gonna regress down to 10. The power press and regress is gonna take it all the way, up. oh, why did I do 30? I'm sorry, did not mean to do 30 on that one. The, did I do that here as well? I did. Did not mean to do 30, sorry about that. The regression strategy, that's why it looks so weird to me, it's gonna take 50 and regress down to 10. The power press and then regress, is gonna power press it all the way up to $60. So now on the second hit of this, the power presser goes up to 60. The mid presser is gonna collect $11. I'm gonna throw in four so they can collect $15. They're gonna go to a quarter. Now, most regressors are now going to switch to some form of, of mid press. So they go up to 15. Now. The power press and then regress player is gonna collect $84. And then they're gonna regress down. So they're actually gonna collect 134 bucks and regress down to 10. So now we've got the third hit. So the third hit, the power press player is gonna collect, is, gonna, is going to get their $84. Probably just going to go to 125. So this is one spot where they don't actually power press it all the way. They're likely gonna to go to 125. The mid press player, probably going to 35. The player that already regressed once, now goes up to their quarter. The player that just now regressed, goes up to their 15. So now on the fourth hit. So the fourth hit, power press player is gonna go all the way up to 300. The mid press player would typically throw in a dollar. In this case, they don't have the dollar, but a dealer that's paying attention is gonna pay him 54 for five right here, and they're gonna go up to 50. This player that is now in the mid press situation is gonna go up to 35. And now this player that, is our, that has regressed is now in the mid press situation, and now they go up to a quarter. So 
So that was hit number four. So now we look at hit number five on the nine. Okay. So this player is going to get paid four hundred twenty dollars. Okay. We're going to make it five and a quarter. Now again, we are in a mid press situation. Go up to seven or full uh, power press situation. Go up to seven hundred. Now I'm going to be honest with you here. A lot of power press players are going to throw in the additional money to take this up to 750. Almost every single one of them is going to do that. Okay. So let's make that happen. Power press players are very ballsy. The mid press player here is going to get paid 70. They can get paid 75 for five. So you're probably just going to go up to 75. And drop that down. Now this other player is also at a mid press, and the original player, or the, the power press and then regress player is also at a mid press. So now let's look at hit number six. So hit number six gets paid 1050, so we'll pay it 1100 for 50. Let's look at what they have. Now, most power pressers here are not going to go up to 1800. They're probably just going to go up to 1500. They're going to collect 300 because 1500 is a very, very easy bet to read, to deal to, to know what it pays, very quick to pay, very simple. And it also makes it easy to go up to your next spot. So, the, this mid press player gets paid 105. Mid press player is likely going to go to one and a quarter. This mid press player goes to 75, collects the 50. This mid press player can throw in their dollar and go to 50. So now, after six repeats of the nine, and, and they're not likely to come back to back to back to back to back, although I, I, I have seen it, but they're not likely to do that. But after six hits of the nine, and again, we want to break the statistical likelihood, so we are hoping. Assuming that this probably occurred within six hits of the nine, let's say this probably occurred within 12 rolls of the dice. So we're still looking at far less than a $20, uh, or $20, 20 minute roll. I'll leave that there. So after six hits, a power presser, instead of $1,500 bet, they also have $300 that they've collected. They've collected $300. Mid press player, the player that started out with a mid press has collected $179 and they're at a $125 bet. The player that, the, the regression player that has gone backwards after the first hit has $175 with a $75 bet right there. And the player that power pressed and then regressed down has $213 with a $50 bet still on the table. So, power press player has $1,800 available to them. $1,800 in action. Mid press player has $304 total in action. Player that regressed after one hit on the number and then went to a mid press has $250 that they can work with. And the player that power pressed and then regressed down has $263 that they can work with. This is a prime example of why we talk about never do a same bet. And why the power press is the one that can make the most money. It's also the riskiest. I am a huge proponent of the power press. However, like I've said, I don't play it anymore very often. I typically do the mid press, although I transition into a power press at a certain point. I would have already been power pressing over here after a few, certain few hits. Um, but uh, yeah, once I got married with a kid and a lot more bills, I had to get a little more conservative with my bets. So let's look at hit number seven. So hit number seven. This right here is going to pay $2,100. And since we started at a $10 table, let's just do a $2,000 max, max bet. It could actually have been $1,000. This player could have been at table max already and collected this $500 additionally to their, their um, bankroll. But let's say they're at table max now. Let's say $2,000 table max. So mid press player here, very likely at this point, a lot of mid press. Well, there's a couple different ways they can do it. So some mid pressers are just going to go to 200 
Others would get slightly more aggressive, slightly less aggressive, kind of depends, but that's a good, that's a good mill spot. Then, whoa, got a runner. And this player. And finally, this one. So that's after seven hits. So after seven hits of the same number, the power presser has $1,900 in their rack and another $2,000 on the table, $3,900. If they want to take their bets down and go home, they could. The mid press player has $279 in their rack with an additional $200 on the table, so $479. You have to think, what is your quitting point? What is the point where you've made enough money that you're ready to go home? Take it down if you've hit that point. Probably not at that point yet, though. That's the problem with the with strategy, like with most of the strategies, is hitting that that exit strategy point takes an even long, even more statistically unlikely role than just this. This it would require probably two numbers to hit um, more, way more than statistically likely. So the regression, the one hit regress mid press player has three hundred and and fifty five dollars total available to them. They have $230 in their rack with another $125 on the table. And finally, the power press and then regress player has $259 in their, or 58? Yeah, $58 in their rack with another $75 on the table. Now let's look at it. One more, I said, what did I say? Seven hits or eight hits? Let's look at hit number eight. This player just collects $2,800 because they are at table max. Mid press player probably goes to 300. Regress then mid press, press player likely going to go to 200. And power press then regress then mid press player probably going to one and a quarter. So now after eight hits of a nine, after eight repeating hits of a nine, which is something, again, that's, that's kind of the goal of most of the strategies. After eight repeating hits of the nine, the power press player is sitting on $4,700 in their rack with an additional $2,000 on the table, $6,700. Now, if a seven out came right now and you had $4,700 in your rack, would you walk away? Would you be happy? Color up and walk away. Just ask yourself that. Mid press player, after eight hits, has $400. And $59 in their rack with an additional $300 on the table. If a seven out occurred right now, depending on what your buy-in is, figure, picture your buy-in, figure you've lost half of it before this roll even started, so you've gained $459. Is that enough for you to be happy and walk away with? If not, your strategy is more geared towards uh, um, grinding out and just playing for a long time than actually winning. Regress. And then mid press has $330 in front of them with an additional $200 on the table. If a seven out were to occur right now, you've already lost half your bankroll. You've gained another $330 back. Are you happy? Because again, this is a very, very rare type of situation. Uh, but this is the goal of the strategies to try and win money on statistically unlikely rolls to catch these kind of, these kind of hits. The power press and then regress player has $313 in their rack with an additional $125 on the table. So I hope you guys find this interesting, illuminating, enlightening, or at the very least, just plain fun or interesting. We will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye now. Thank you everybody for watching today's video. And as promised, a little bit more detail on things that we are working on. So Again, we want, to, uh, we want to continue trying to expand the channel. We're really hoping to be, ad to be able to add roulette as soon as possible. And then some video kino, video slots, stuff along those lines. Um, unfortunately, it ate up almost all of our cash, um, paying off all of our bills during the month of January, January while we were down. And uh, now that the holidays have ended, um, YouTube's uh, payouts have dropped significantly. So. Uh, we're kind of treading water here uh, uh, as far as all that goes. Do have a lot of things we want to add, though. Not just those, those things, those, those additional games, and hopefully some carnival games and such, such like that, but the live streams. The biggest problem right now with the live streams is with three jobs combined between the two of us, four if I include the, the 20 to 30 hours a week I'm putting into the YouTube channel. 
um, it's very, very difficult for me to have a day and time that I can commit to doing the live stream every single week because we also have our, our very young child to, to take care of. But I'm trying to figure that out. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably going to end up being on, on Monday nights or Tuesday afternoons or possibly both. I intend to do at least one live stream exclusively for our patrons and then another one on the YouTube channel. So possibly both, both days. Um, we also have a few other things that, that we really want to attempt to move forward on. I'm just running into to either time or skill set issues. I do want to eventually have a, a website going for us. Um, I did used to program websites a long, over a decade ago. A lot of things have changed and I just don't have that time. Um, and uh, not a whole lot of knowledge on the current state of, of um, building websites, hosting site, you know, what, what sites can host and, and uh, uh, how to build up, you know, the e-commerce stuff. So if anybody has any skill sets along those lines and would like to answer some questions uh, or just help us out, shoot us an email, SinCityLivingLV at gmail.com. Um, also, I really hope to be able to start adding some, some uh, fairly ex some exclusive stuff from Sin City Living, uh, logoed shirts, hats. I'm looking to get uh, custom dice made, even custom, custom layouts made, although those would be pretty expensive. Um, but I know zero about e-commerce and drop shipping and uh, anything along those lines. So if you have any skill or knowledge in that area, please email me. Uh, I, would, I would love to ask you some questions and uh, see, if, uh, see if you can answer, answer a few to help me figure out how to get that going. Um, same thing with uh, with designing our logos. You know, I, I I had the logo had some logos designed, very very small logos, unfortunately, not big enough to blow up to put on T-shirts and stuff like that. And again, I know next to nothing. Not next to I know nothing about um, logo design, graphic design, any kind of websites that could that could do it. Um, I I literally know nothing. So if you have any skill or knowledge in that area, also please email me, and you're willing to ask, answer some questions, please email me and uh and let me know i uh, uh i'll admit i don't even know where to start as far as asking some questions but i'm sure I'll, I'll ask a few and that'll trigger a few more so on and so forth um so yeah there's that and and uh of course we do hope to continue to improve our av setup but i am an av moron so also right there if you have any skill sets or knowledge in that area please email me and, and are willing to answer some questions, please email me and, uh, and let me know. We would love the help. Uh, otherwise, again, thank you everybody for watching and we're very excited to continue bringing you our videos. Bye now.